Why does the website sound like a political streamer's version of, of, of Pog U? Yeah, unfortunately. It's because, oh, oh, Glooby, the reason why they sell themselves as Prager U is because they want to um, give themselves the appearance of legitimacy. Prager U is a political organization. They're not a university. They're not even a school. They just call themselves Prager University because they want to give um they want to give the impression that they're like they have some sort of like quality and uh authority to their views but it's just bullshit it's just random bullshit yeah they are universally stupid true let's see like the fair-minded progressive that i was jesus christ i thought a 15 minded progressive that i was I thought a $15 minimum wage was an absolute good. Hey, look, they even gave her the SJW glasses. Damn. Man, this must suck. It must really suck to do to to basically be the fake SJW that gets that gets like that gets to play the like I was an idiot role for Prager U. Oof. Sure the paycheck was nice though. Then I had a head-on yeah, collision with too. reality. It's a funny thing about reality. It just that was quick. The boomerisms right out the right out the bat. <laughs> I used to think the world could be a better place, but then I got a real job and I learned that it can't be a better place and that everyone should be just as miserable as I am forever, if not more. In fact, I think I should pull the ladder up behind me and make sure that my kids can never have any of the opportunities that I did. <laughs> Off to the coal mines. Yeah, it's funny. You know, I don't want to steal a page from Vosh because I know he literally said this last night. But in my experience, working a job and getting a dose of reality has made me less likely to buy into right wing shit. Are you kidding me? Like every every single person like I've had fucking boomers telling me oh, you need to get a real job since I was 16 when I worked in a blueberry field. Are you fucking kidding me? I've worked on fucking, t I've worked on runways, l carrying fucking luggage. I've worked in sales. I've worked every fucking job you can imagine. I worked at fucking movie stores, retail, everything. I've worked every fucking job. And that working fucking like tough, low wage jobs is what fucking wakes you up to the world. Working radicalized me for sure. Oh, absolutely, Nick. True. Yeah, that kind of shit always... Of course it hurts economic growth. As it turns out, ruining the lives of poor people, which make up the majority of society, is going to make the majority of society unhappy, and the only people who are going to benefit from it are fucking financial elites. Hey, cool, Wendelby. Blueberry Field Pass. I didn't work there very long because I really fucking hated it, but I did do it. Yeah, in Maine, you have to. It's required by law. It is. You can't wish it away. So here is my cautionary tale. You can't wish it away. Say the people who literally, as we've seen today, hasn't today been just an entire, an entire parade of examples of people trying to wish reality away by telling themselves the same narratives over and over and over and over again? Oh, yeah, we're going to look at that after this. Hell yeah, Atona no Aji. Thank you. Remind me if I forget. We're going to look at that little piece of propaganda. For over three decades, I had a good job working as a server. I have worked in some amazing award-winning uh -oh. restaurants. Uh-oh, what's this? What's this? Somebody clip me. What did I say? Uh-oh. The world could be a better place, but then I got a real job, and I learned... <laughs> that it can't be a better place and that everyone should be just as miserable as I am forever, if not more. In fact, I think I should pull the ladder up behind me and make sure that my kids can never have any of the opportunities that I did. <laughs> Off to the coal mines. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was a God tier clip. Gina Ragnos fucking good ass clip. That one also going up. Holy shit. Oh no, why can't I? Oh, it's because I'm still live. All right, I'll save it later. <laughs> There's so many good clips. We've been having a good time today. I'm not going to lie. We've been having a fucking good time. I've been having a good time. Y'all make my life so much, so much fucking better. Holy shit. Once in Seattle. I hey, 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 hey. Wh Wait a minute. Award-winning restaurants in Seattle. 
I enjoyed the work, met wonderful people, and I was making really good money. I wasn't making much per hour, that's true. But in my business, the magic is in tips. On a LOL! Typical night, I would make on average $25 to $50 an hour. Believe me, I earned it. I took pride in my work. I wanted every dining experience to be a memorable one for my guests. I wanted every dining experience. I don't believe, I'm sorry, but I don't believe that this person was a good server. She can't deliver these lines for shit. I also loved my job for this reason. I had flexibility. I could plan- Bullshit! Bullshit! I have never had a job with fucking flexibility. Holy shit. How many, just, just a quick show of hands. Just a quick show of hands in the fucking audience. How many people have had their jobs constantly schedule them with no control over it? And you're lucky if you get to ask a favor to be scheduled. Yeah, bullshit. Bullshit. I haven't had, I haven't, I've worked jobs where I was part time and they still had mandated fucking, uh, mandated fucking, um, shifts holy shit nobody gets fucking flexibility these days especially not servers are you kidding me yes uh atona no aji before fucking covid we did have good good restaurants a lot of our restaurants have gone out of business oh hey uh hey retcon you know who went you know which business you know which restaurant went out of business fucking herfies herfies went out of business there's only one left now all the other ones closed permanently sucks um herfies was like this awesome burger place near where i live and it's so fucking good but there's only one left now a lot of lot of restaurants have closed because of covid unfortunately i mean anyway whatever yeah yeah if you oh yeah that's another thing if you work at a fucking fancy restaurant your tips first of all just so you know um uh just so you know really fine dining, really fine dining, they pay their workers way above minimum wage. Fine dining, if you're working at a good restaurant, they don't fucking pay minimum wage. They never pay minimum wage. That's fucking, because, because as it turns out, um, if you want to assure quality work, you actually have to pay people. So for fine dining, where they're making lots of money and charging lots of money, they know they need to pay their servers more or their servers will say, fuck you. But yeah. Um, so a lot of bullshit here, but a uh, feminist critique, you're a hundred percent right on that. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's like, if she's supposedly working at a good restaurant, she was getting fucking ripped off. My work schedule. That was very important to me because I had a growing son. It was a good life. Then in 2015. It was a good life. And then the SJW nation attacked. And it was over. 15, the Seattle City Council raised the minimum wage. Hell yeah, right there. Kashama Sawant, baby. A 58% hike. Woo! Great Hell for the yeah. working stiff, right? Well, hang on, because here comes Mr. Reality. The business owner, the person who signs the checks, has to find a way to pay for this massive new expense. For Walmart or Microsoft or a large restaurant chain. Walmart and Microsoft? Uh, Walmart, the company that doesn't actually have any wall, any buildings in the Seattle city limits where this law was passed, um, McDonald's, which already paid its workers 15 an hour because the, um, because the, uh, the fucking fast food law passed like five years ago or six years ago. Um, and also fucking Microsoft does Microsoft. I don't even think Microsoft hires minimum wage workers. Microsoft Microsoft's headquarters is in Bellevue. What the fuck? All of this is a lie. What the fuck? Everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked and raised the wages up to a, to a like slightly below living wage. Yeah, no, no, no. Wal like Seattle area has Walmarts. There's just none in the city limits. There's no space. Um, there's like one Costco. Like there's very, very few big box stores in Seattle. That's the case with many cities. Um, most cities don't have big box stores like in the city limits. They're in the they're in the area outside. Yeah, I mean there's a Walmart like in my in my um, 
borough, but I don't live within like proper Seattle proper. I live in one of the boroughs of Seattle of the greater Seattle area. Yeah, there's oh yeah, there is a target in downtown. Um that's true. Yeah, tech doesn't hire fucking minimum wage because tech isn't minimum. Yeah, exactly. This is this is all bullshit. And anyway, M McDonald's has already been paying well above minimum wage within Seattle city limits for like fucking a decade. Yeah, um, Microsoft's uh, like, is it in Redmond? Wa Wait, Redmond, Washington? Yeah, it might be in Red Redmond, not 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 Bellevue. I know they have a um, I know they have a campus in Bellevue. And also, I think Google has a small campus in Seattle proper. But that small campus is office workers, not minimum wage workers. Yeah, Valve is also in Bellevue. Excuse me. This might not be a problem. For a local restaurant owner, it's a nightmare. Sure. Contrary to popular opinion, most restaurants don't have big profit margins. In fact, most are razor thin. Seattle restaurant owners, faced with this shock to their bottom line, raised prices reworked their menus and created new compensation models. Some did away with tips altogether. Substitute Hey, hey, remember um remember when uh remember when we talked about um how DoorDash was hijacking um like uh fucking restaurant websites in order to divert deliveries from their from their internal phone line um with the help of Google. Remember when we talked about that? Remember when we read that article? Do you think maybe that might contribute to why like restaurants are having such a fucking hard time? Hmm. Tooting a flat service charge as a way of navigating the climbing wage. That change in the tipping model caused a dent in my pocketbook. The rise in the wage did not cover the loss of tips. And, of course, they cut back on employee hours and support staff, too. But for many establishments, none of these cost-saving measures worked. Restaurants, some that had been in business for decades, many family-owned, closed. Hey, including the hey, you want to know another cool fact about Seattle? Did you know that for, like, I think it's like three years now, we've been in a, in a legitimate housing and rent crisis and that rent affects fucking restaurants as well the reason why restaurants have to pay so much is because the there's like four corporate landlords that own all of seattle and they can charge whatever the fuck they want because you don't have a choice to go anywhere else and by the way there's plenty of small restaurants that have that are perfectly fine there's literally a taqueria like a tiny taqueria right down the street from my house still doing perfectly fine and they have to pay their their workers 15 an hour yeah cost of living here is insane ones I worked for. Good servers don't grow on trees and I was able to score an interview at another amazing restaurant. Then, before I could even confirm the interview, that one closed too. Same reason. The $15 minimum wage cut their profits down to nothing. Mm. Source? This is just her opinion. So let me add this up for you. I make a lot less money now than I did before Seattle decided to- Bullshit. Bullshit. You're in a fucking PragerU video. There's no fucking way you're making less money right now than you did when Seattle instituted the fucking 15 minimum wage. You're a lying bullshit. Bullshit artist. To do what was supposedly in my best interest. I used to be able to pay my bills as they came due. Now it's a juggling act. You know what would really help with that? Social safety net. I used to have enough money to support my son's extracurricular activities. But now my son got launched into the, into, into the sun by leftist. Now I often just say no. Bef I just say, no, son. You do not get to live a happy life. I hate you. For the minimum wage increase, I had one job and worked four days a week. After the wage hike, I had two jobs and worked six. With my skills and a tipping culture. Hmm. I used to average 18 to 20% or more on any check. Now, instead of tips, I get a flat 14%, part of the 20% service charge the restaurant owner tax on the bill. I still pro I've never paid a 20% service charge anywhere in Seattle. Like, literally. I... Don't go to fancy restaurants, but nowhere in Seattle have I ever paid a, a fucking service charge.
The only fucking service charge I've ever paid is the times that I've had to order through DoorDash because DoorDash is the only one that was delivering it for, for a while. That's the only time I've ever had to pay a service charge, and that's DoorDash scraping off the top. I myself in providing good service, but the incentive to go the extra mile is gone. There is no way to maximize my income. And what's Seattle's answer to my problem? Damn! You know what the answer is? Socialism, baby. Fucking co-ops, baby. Fucking no more of this bullshit. Get rid of that fucking, uh, fucking corporate mandate bullshit. Get rid of the fucking, you know, want to know what you do? Tax Amazon. There's a way to solve these problems. Maybe if Amazon wasn't fucking crushing the entire state's economy, we'd have, maybe that fucking business is still going on. You know that the only fucking people remaining in this entire state after all of this is going to be Amazon and Walmart because they're the only companies big enough uh, to survive a society that has no social safety net for anyone when nobody has money. And we're going through one of the greatest depressions uh, in the history of our country prompted, brought on specifically because of corporate targeted policy. To raise True, the Gina minimum Ragnos. wage again. Yeah, the progressive do it again. idea is that you should be able to make a fair wage. The progressive idea is that you should be able to to make a fair wage. And mine is that you shouldn't make a fair wage. You should just get ripped off all the time. Let's see. Let's see what this clip says. Support my son's extracurricular activities. But now my son got launched into the, into, into the sun by leftist. Now I often just say- Damn! Why are we getting so many fucking good ones? We've been getting fucking good ones. True! Uh, the leftists took my son, launched him into the launched him into the sun. It's fact. It's fact. No, I can't provide any stories for that. No, I can't provide any evidence. It was leftist. It was leftist policy. Uh, the leftists came into town. They raised the minimum wage and they passed a policy that said all sons launched into the sun. But if you have no job or are working more for less- how is that fair? How You're right. How is it fair that you should be you should have to work more for less in in the most in the most the most wealthy nation in the world? Corporations that are making millions can't pay anybody a fair amount and they have they consistently evade taxes. Companies like, I don't know, Activision Blizzard that uses a tax loophole to pay fucking zero income taxes. Yeah. Maybe our society wouldn't have so many problems if corporations weren't fucking avoiding paying their fair share. Hmm. Good job. Sorry, or are that could be. Working more for less. How is that? True, fair? Marinara. How is it fair to my friend who worked his way up from busboy to Somali? How is it fair for my friend who worked his way up from busboy to Somali? The fancy name. He bootstrapped. For the he bootstrapped. The person who manages a restaurant's wine list. He lost his job when his restaurant closed due to the minimum wage increase. Dude, if you were a fucking sommelier, at a, if you're at a restaurant that has a sommelier, why the fuck can't you pay your fucking workers 15 an hour? What the fuck? Are you kidding me? That sounds like a fucking money laundering scandal. Or my former boss, who went from a cook... Anecdote, anecdote, man, anecdote Andy over here. Look to an owner and couldn't survive <gasps> the double he went to an owner he got promoted from cook to owner i love it when that happens do you remember the last oh my god i remember the time when i when i got promoted from janitor to the owner of the school i love that when that happens flow of the minimum wage law and the coronavirus wait what that's the minimum wage law, which happened five years ago, and the coronavirus, which just struck right now, destroyed this young bootstrapper's career. Oh, God. And the coronavirus. The coro- Okay, all yes. right. Those two are and the it's same. it's not just a Seattle problem. So they were fine. Interesting how the restaurant was fine for five years paying $15 minimum wage, and then the- pandemic that destroy that's destroying our nation and there's been absolutely zero support for any small businesses or workers is the thing that finally finishes it yeah the son of the restaurant owner listen hey sarcomatus sarcomatus um excuse me but they got promoted through hard work and grit they had their grit levels were over fucking it was like fucking from Star Wars, you know? It was like, I've never seen, uh, I've never seen midichlorian count this high. It's like, I've never seen grit and gumption levels this high. 
Listen, all you need to do to become the owner of the restaurant that you work at, listen, all you need to become the owner of Walmart is just grit and gumption. And if your grit and gumption is enough, you will someday own the Walmart. Despite the fact that no one owns a Walmart, Walmarts are corporately operated. There are no fucking owners besides the family that run, owns and operates all of them. And you, the, the promotion rate from like worker to management is like fucking nothing. In New York City. Yeah, not even Master Yoda has that much grit and gumption. See. Raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour pushed the restaurant industry into a recession. Oh, totally. To stay afloat, Citation 75% needed. of owners reduced employee hours and 47% eliminated jobs. San Francisco is in the same boat. Mandating minimum wage laws. Like, I like how this entire video has been about Seattle and then they just threw in an, an entirely different place. Massive city with huge economic problems of its own in there at the last minute. Also, it's happening in San Francisco. And you want to know why they throw San Francisco in there? Because San Francisco is a liberal bugbear. They hear the word San Francisco and they lose their fucking minds. Might be a winner for progress. Yeah, true radical retcon. You have great potential. Your grit and gumption ensures that someday you might be able to be a key holder on alternating Thursdays. No pay increase, though. We're going to give you the mandatory 11 cent raise every year for the rest of your life. And when you die, the you will have been so eclipsed by the by the fucking uh, by the fucking inflation rate that it will that you will have lost money throughout working your entire career at a Walmart. Chicago's pretty poor. Just look at Detroit. True. You know when you see an advertisement for a casino and they have a picture of a guy winning money? That's false advertising because that happens the least. That's like if you're advertising a hamburger and they show a guy choking. This is what happened once. True! The house always wins. Same goes for this shit. That's how capitalism works. Capitalism is a fucking Vegas casino all the time. Aggressive politician. Yeah, I've worked jobs that are supposedly higher pay that have given me a 25 cent raise after a year of breaking my records in sales. It's bullshit. And ivory tower economists. But it's a loser for those of us who Wait, have ivory tower economists? Ivory tower economists are fucking right wingers! Are you kidding me? Economics is like the most right wing uh, school of... of, 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 of or uh, the most right-wing fucking topic in, in on colleges. Right-wing eco economics in the United States has been dominated by right-wingers. So when they say ivory tower economists, e economists, they mean fucking right-wingers. They're shitting on their own guys here. But you say ivory tower and people go, oh yeah, the Marxists. All those Marxist economic schools in the United States. Deliver. All those Marxist economic schools in the United States that don't fucking even teach Marx. Oh my God. The consequences. Unless fair-minded people speak out, those consequences only figure to get worse as more states oh my and maybe God, even the federal taken government over by fair succumb wages. to the false promise of raising the minimum wage. I'm Simone Barron with the Full Service Workers Alliance for Prager University. The Full Service Workers Alliance. Thank you Alliance. for watching this video. What's the Full Service Workers Alliance? Let's find out about this. This is not an impressive website so far. Creating a foundational hub for full, for full service restaurant workers to advocate for themselves and their industry. Connecting advocates for the responsible drafting of legislation as it pertains to all members of the full service restaurant industry. Building a stronger community in the full service sector. Solve the full service sector. Solve the issues which concern us most within and outside of our industry. Wouldn't that be within and without? Also, they missed a fucking word here. They didn't even fucking... They didn't even fucking do a proofread. Grammarly costs like $10. Use Grammarly for fuck's sake. Composed from composed from individuals actively working in the full service industry. Period. We work to ensure our industry op operates within the be within best practices that support both workers and industry. Wow, that's a that's a big caveat there. We, po we favor the least amount of special interest and governmental oversight possible. Hmm. 
Hmm. We work to ensure our industry operates within within best practices that support both workers and industry. We favor the least amount of special interest and governmental oversight as possible. Wait, you mean special interest like workers? Like workers' rights? Why we exist? Let's find out. This is this is literal astroturf. They don't even have an address. Made in 2018. Here's the people who made it. Kate and Design. Unforgettable websites. Somebody's daughter just got hired to make a PragerU AstroTurf website. Check out our past work. Pilates Studio Catering Company, Seattle. They've only done two things. They've only done two. This is AstroTurf. This is, we are literally watching. You are literally watching me uncover AstroTurf. This is what they do. They throw money at shit. They've done two fucking campaigns and they did a website for fucking this. They did this shit ass website for a PragerU video. I doubt that they've ever even done anything. Why we exist? Donate. They have donations though. You can fucking donate to them. This is, a, I don't, I don't want to say this is a scam, but holy shit. When was the Prager U video made? The Prager U video made, was made like, uh, like, a, like earlier this month on the 13th. This does look like a scam. I should call this number. I should call this number and see what they're about. I bet they have, I bet this is someone's cell phone number. And then they just go, yeah, um, you want to donate to our site? You can, um, help us, uh. Help us win um, industry standard best practice uh, buzzword, buzzword, buzzword. Holy shit. Holy shit. What do they do? Let's find out. <laughs> oh my God. Come on. Come on. You've got to be kidding me. What we do. We pay attention. We show up. Good job. Good job, FSWA Seattle. Many special interest groups seek to manipulate the service industry for their own game gain. This is poisoning the well right here. Policy is created and legislated under the guise of helping workers and creating best practices. What does this mean? And creating best practices? What the fuck does that mean? What does that mean? This is nonsense. These policies, if left unchecked, can be chalk, chalked full of negative consequences for the industry and the workers they're supposed to help. The FSWA keeps track of legislation that may affect the industry and, and our incomes in a negative way. We pay attention. Wow. Good job. We show up. The FSWA is active. We engage workers via our Facebook page. Holy shit. This is like, this is like a con. This is like a fucking, is this, I don't know. I don't think I can say it's a scam, but it sure seems like a scam. Holy shit. We represent, we engage workers via our Facebook page by presenting different topics of discussion surrounding policy that will affect our industry. We write op-eds and interviews educating people about service industry topics that have been published in periodicals all over the country. What this means is that um, Tucker Carlson and Ben Shapiro um, were like, yeah, sure, whatever, fucking put it on our website. They had two blogs at some point that went up on a website so that they could say this without getting sued. You will find us testifying on behalf of professionals in the industry in support of our industry culture and traditions. Industry, they can't even turn off the right wing thing, like double speak. Industry culture and traditions? We are engaged with local and national legislators to bridge the gap between workers having a voice about the industry. Nothing here is, there is nothing actually said here. This is all bullshit. None of this means anything. And that's it. That's all they have. 
That's everything that's on there, what we do. The shirt, hey, they got a donation page though. Got a donation page. What's our mission? Mission, what we do. A fresh and modern group of advocates who aim to strategically mediate between workers, their employers, employers and local legislators to create and inspire optimal working environments while cultivating our cultures and traditions of... While cultivating our cultures and traditions of the full service industry to avoid stagnation, it is an objective of ours to continually influence the evolu evolution of the full ser service industry to further protect workers' rights as it progresses. This is straight up. This is Dylan Burns. Is that wait, wait, Dylan Burns. Have, how long have you been here? Look at this. Look at this right here. I'm going to you're going to love this, Dylan. The F FSWA is active. We engage workers via our Facebook page. Could you get in contact with these guys and ask them if it was run by the Josh for Congress campaign? Because engaging workers via our Facebook page sounds like something that that fucking campaign management would run. Holy shit. Also, good to see you here, Dylan. Just figured you might love that line. Holy shit. Yuck. This is, this is, the, most, this is the most shallow shit I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah, no, I know, I know. This is what they do. This is what they do. They spin these things up. They spin these fucking things up out of thin air. This is what this is what they talk about when people say astro astroturf. Holy shit. This has been going since 2018. Also, Dylan, by the way, um Oh, do they FS and NB? Perceived powers, yada yada. Yeah, this this fucking website was designed by somebody who's only designed two other websites and they like, Oh my God, this is so ridiculous. You can't even find it by type. Yeah. It's probably been blacklisted for them thinking it was a fucking scam. Holy shit. Oh my God. Did you seriously? Is she just like totally invented? Oh my God. Incredible. You can't, you can't beat it, folks. You can't beat just fucking having money and just spinning up organizations on the fly and telling people we're good. Trust us. Hundreds. Oh my God. The bank has FSWA as first sound Washington. Ah, <laughs> have they been, have they been rough? They've been pretty good. I've been having a good time on my, on panels lately. Well, you went on Chud night, didn't you? Was it rough? I didn't see the latter half of Chud night, unfortunately. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Zarel, what'd you find? What'd we find? Holy shit. <sighs> oh, no. I'm sorry to hear that, Melanie. Damn. She has jobs in 2020? Uh, is it for PragerU? Does she work for, like, Brookings Institute? Wait, you know these people? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It was uh the Prager U video was published um on the 13th of this month. So, oh no! Oh no, no, no. What did we discover? What did we discover? Tell me. Give me it. Tell me what we found out. It's all righties and lib capitalists, so anything I say is like whatever water is wet. Mm, fair enough, yeah. It's all right. We'll get a spicy one going here at some point. We'll get one going. Don't worry. Fox News on December 16th saying that she lost her job. Did she lose her job as, uh, a, a, as a... Uh, yeah, these people... Like, this is so... Yes, I have. Actually, that's what we were going to talk about. Um, next, actually. Hmm. Hmm. Wait, these, the, the FSWA? Yeah, no way. There's no way these people are interesting. Like, this, this shit is, is all, this website is all bullshit. And the, the messages that they're saying is literally just, basically, we encourage people to not join unions and we instead push for, like, fucking, um, we push for legislation that's not in like not in the class interest of workers. These people seem manipulative as fuck. And they have I, I do love that their their de donate thing is so um Oh, yeah, thank you. It's been a wild day. We've had like a fucking crazy day. I I'm actually going to have to go eat dinner soon, but holy shit. 
Yeah. Don't forget the 825 an hour. That one should be a fast one to rip apart. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Wait, what? Spectrum Melodies. Wait, what? They do everything in their power to shut people up. I can't say much more since I found out about them when I worked for a, a 1199SIEU local. Oh, so they're a, they're a sneaky organization then. Yeah, that doesn't, uh, that doesn't surprise me.